students today we will start our next topics from the chapter 8 flying of the arts in mogul times please go through page number 129 till 134 our first topic is paradise on earth mogul gardens mogul gardens design in 1365 samarkand in modern day uzbekistan became the capital of timur and developed into an important economic and cultural center timur built many gardens there and when the moguls arrived in the subcontinent they brought with them the persian style charbagh system of garden building here is the uh, picture from the source 8.21 of charbagh geometry for the mogul gardens our next topic is why did the moguls create gardens in gardens it's a usual perception we can find shade escape dirt and noise take some exercise and also enjoy natural things moguls also enjoyed gardens for all these reasons but gardens were important for other reasons too they had an extra value as a symbol of order and of good rule building a garden and forcing water to run along canals and into pools and fountain was a way of for man to take control of natural and use it for his own purpose building a garden was also a symbolic mogul way of showing control over conquered lands the akmar nama explains about the mogul delight in order and the belief that order has religious power from source 8.22 from akbar nama there has been written his majesty is a great friend of good order through order the world becomes a meadow of truth and reality the things of the world that we can see if they are put in a proper order receive a spiritual meaning our next topic is babur the great garden builder it was babur who introduced the persian style garden to the subcontinent and built gardens in all large cities in india he wrote a garden is the purest of human pleasures he was also interested in the types of plants but in to put into the gardens he introduced into india melons from kabul and also grapes with each successive mogul reign gardens become more magnificent and complex they were enclosed by a high wall with massive gateways with huge wooden doors in time gardens became settings for places or mausoleums it becomes popular to have a pavilion in the center of a pool surrounded by fountains in 9, in 1620 jahangir built a terraced garden at shalamar near the dal lake uh, in sirinagar and shah jahan later on built another shalamar garden at lahore Here is a picture of Shalimar Garden at Lahore. Our next topic is rippling, rippling and splashing the importance of water. Running water was very important in Mughal times, Mughal gardens. They usually built gardens on steps or terraces, allowed water to flow and fountains to be created easily. Babur built gardens on a series of eight terraces to show the eight divisions of paradise. The Mughal used to Persian wheel, a water wheel system which raised water from lower levels to higher levels. For example, out of a river into garden on its banks. Persian wheels were worked by camels or oxen. Water was also supplied from wells 
It rained on terraces in smooth cascades or rushed over marble chutes. Cheddars, which means wide shawls of water, curved so that the water rippled and splashed. Our next topic is what sort of garden plants did the Mughal like? Avenues of trees were planted to provide shady walks or in areas where feasts, festivals and parties were held. Many different types of trees were grown. Mixed avenues of poplar or cypress trees and the shady white plane tree or orange or lemon trees. The overgreen, the evergreen cypress tree was the symbol of death and eternity. Flowering trees were very popular as were trees which provided food such as oranges, lemons, almonds and plums symbolizing youth and hope. Other foods such as cherries, coconut, dates, mulberries, peaches, peas, pineapple, bananas, etc. were also grown. Mughals loved flowers and grew many different types including roses, jasmine, hollyhocks, peonies, etc. As well as plants, the Mughals loved to have bright fish, birds and butterflies to bring life and color to their creations. Lahore, city of Mughal gardens. Lahore had been a garden city for centuries before the arrival of the Mughals. In Ghaznavi times, 11th century, writers mention the sweet perfumes, flowers, and fresh air of Lahore. From the time of Akbar, gardens were built along all the major, major roads in the city. Gardens were also made up by uh, made up by important Mughal noblemen. Gardens at Shadra. The earliest Mughal garden in Lahore was at Shadra in the northwest of the city on the west bank of the river Ravi. It was built in ab about 1527 by Mirza Kamran, brother of Umayyo. Garden had a number of water features including 8 point star shaped pool. Later on Mughal built more gardens at Chadra and the Emperor Jahangir was buried there in the Dilkisha garden built by his wife Noor Jahan. Later Noor Jahan was buried in a marble mausoleum nearby. In source 8.24, it was written about Noor Jahan's Dilkasha garden in Shadra. Around it, it there has been built a wall tall and broad of bricks and cement exceedingly strong. In garden there is tall building and a house highly decorated, pleasant reservoirs have been built and outside the gate a large well has been made. The canal passes through the garden and pours water into the reservoirs. Please go through source 8.24. My next topic is Heaven on Earth, the Shalimar Garden. Shalimar Garden stood on the bank of the river Ravi. It means house of joy, gardens, Garden had water features, pavilions, bathhouse, grazy lawns, and many plants and trees. Canal run along it from north to south. 2006 feet means 611 meters long. A modern historian described the Shalimar as one of the most charming gardens in the world and the example of perfect Mughal garden in Pakistan. Shah Jahan liked the Shalimar garden so much that when he visited Lahore, he often stayed there rather than at the fort. In source 
Abdul Hamid Lahore, Shah Jahan's court historian, wrote the gardens and agreeable pavilions which had been built about grounds which all competed with heavens in grandeur were now found suitable to the royal taste. In fact, never before had a garden of such magnificent description have seen or heard for for the buildings alone of this earthly paradise have been erected at an outlay of 6 lakh of rupees. Next topic is the three terraces. Shalimar had three wide terraces which stepped down to flood plain of the river. Enormous expanse, a new canal, the Shah Neher, the Royal Canal, was built to bring water from the river Ravi at Rajpur, about 150 kilometers north northeast. In addition to the canal, two large wells were also dug to supply water, about 450 fountains. The first terrace contained the royal residential building including the Aramga, emperor's resting place, converted into the main entrance by the British in 1850. Middle terrace has had a Turkish bath with four rooms, the dressing room, hot room, cold room and running water area. Today the bath survives in quite good condition, although the original Pytra Jura inland stone work decoration have gone. The lowest terrace had the main gateways which were high enough for a person riding an elephant to enter. In the center, an island was there called Mahatabi, reached by a walkway which was originally used by the Mughals on nights when the moon was bright. Next topic is the great age of Mughal painting. Mughal painting did not begin to develop until the reign of Akbar. In source 8.28 from Akbar Nama, it's written, his majesty from this from his earliest youth has shown a great liking for this art and gives it every encouragement as he sees it as a way both of study and amusement the works of all painters brought before his majesty every week then gives rewards according to the excellence of workmanship or increasing the monthly salaries Our next topic is Jahangir, the greatest Mughal patron of painting. Early Mughal paintings were often copies of Persian paintings, but soon Hindu and other Hindu Indian style were added. In this way, a new painting style developed. Today, we called it as Mughal style. Mughal painting reached its height under Jahangir, who a historian said was the soul and spirit of Mughal art. Jahangir in his memories from source 8.29 describing my liking of painting and my practice in judging it have arrived at such point when any work is brought before me either of dead artists or those of present day present day without the names being told me I say on a spur of the moment that is the work of such and such a man and if there be a picture containing many portraits and each face to be face be the work of a different master i can discover which face is work of each of them paintings in jahangir's reign show less action than those of akbar reign and other scenes have caught life rather than conquest jahangir was often shown on the throne and with a hollow of light around his head this showed that he was in control, holding the court, giving justice. In earlier times, one painting might have been the work of a many painters, but under Jahangir painters become specialist. Jahangir was an expert on nature and during his reign, many finely detailed pictures planned, birds and animals were produced. Our next topic is what material did Mughal artists use? Mughal painters also had the skill of paint mixers. 
many different ingredients went into their paints white often made with metal lead white tin white and zinc white black came from lamp soot burnt camphor blue indigo a plant dye was the most commonly used blue color another blue valuable lapis lazuli stone was ground to produce expensive blue paint most common green was verdigris gold and silver golden powder or gold leaf form was used and for silver in metal was used the artist also knew how to make brushes depending on the type of brush they wanted artists used hairs from persian kittens squirrels goats and camels hair were bound into feather quills next topic is european influence european paintings received as gift at the court gave mogul artists the opportunity to study western methods and styles in 8.31 edward terre writes about jahangir's court artist are excellent at limiting at limiting miniature painting and will copy out any picture they see to the life the truth is that the natives of monarchy are the best apps for imitation in the world our next topic is writers and bookmakers books were expensive to make requiring the skill craftsmen craftsmen such as paper makers calligraphers painters and bookbinders books were seen as the sign of wealth and power especially when they had jewels stuck to the pages the emperor might ask for a new book to be written or a foreign book to to be translated the task needed skilled writers and translators akbar at his library were where greek arabic sanskrit and latin texts were translated into the persian until aurangzeb stopped the practice mughal emperors created history books of their reign of their reigns akbar for example akbar nama temur as temur nama illustrator history of copies of babar nama were sent round to the empire to show that the power of mughals stretched back to temur humayun's private library at purana kila delhi this is all for today please go through all these pages thank you so much allah hafiz